Hello, different location, same old Kai. Um, I decided to just randomly uh, do my January wrap up because I feel like I feel like that's a thing I should do now because why not? I need one more thing though. Stay there. What I had meant by that is usually I kind of prepare a little bit more for my wrap ups, uh, but this time I just was like. I should really get that shit done so that I'm not procrastinating it and it's not posted in like the middle of the month because it's already February 4th and this is my January wrap up, right? So I don't want it to be too late and I just got my iPad so I could... <laughs> that scared me. That was just something, somebody outside doing their thing. I just wanted to do my January wrap up now so that because okay two things i just want to say that i hmm, just finished a book like literally just finished a book and i said that it was um a january book like a book that i finished in january even though that's not true but like who cares i make the rules for my life right so um i need something else i need something else i'll be right back i'm so sorry you know what i mean i usually am more prepared than this and also if you see smoke it's just a diffuser I don't have smoke coming out of my head or anything. Okay, other thing that I got. Is this my reading journal? Oh my God, this is chaotic. This is chaotic. Okay, if I need any more. I guess it doesn't look like it's coming out of my head at all. Hey guys. It's like coming out of my ears. I'm just always pissed. That's a joke. Okay, what am I saying? What am I doing? What was I saying before this? Because I want to finish that sentence, that train of thought. I guess just the fact that... I just finished a book and I said that I did it in January and so I, I, I could not do this wrap up until I had finished that book. But now that I have finished it, I can now do the wrap up and my boyfriend's in the room where I usually do the filming, like he's in a class, Zoom meeting, so I'm doing it here. Okay, let's see if I remember the books that I read in January. That was such a long intro, oh my goodness guys. Okay, right into the content. So the first book that I read was Boy Parts by Eliza Clark. This book is um, about a woman in like her 20s who is, she's basically, she t she's a uh, fetish photographer. She takes photos um, of men, she finds men and takes pictures of them in various fetish attire, I suppose, attire and, you know, position and all of that. So um, that's what she does. This book is not very plot heavy, as, like it's as much as it's character heavy, like it's very character dense, right? And this girl that we are following, like nothing really truly happens in the book, but at the same time, like everything happens in this book. But this woman that we are following is uh, kind of a mess, you know? She, you know, is uh, into drugs, heavily into drugs, heavily into having sex with anybody. And not that that's like, like, I don't give a fuck about that, but like I'm saying, like, it just adds to like the mess that she is, if that makes sense. Like, it's, it's very chaotic. I gave this book four stars and I feel like I did not describe that very well, but uh, I've already read this with somebody and we had a pretty good conversation about it. Um, but I don't know how much I can say without like, spoiling anything without telling you everything about this character and then this is why we came to this conclusion or I came to this conclusion or we spoke about this these things right in my journal here I put like a lot of quotes that I enjoyed there's like one part it says um it was like in reference to uh her friend the um main character's friend her name's Irina I keep calling her like woman or main character but her name's Irina and she was talking about um how her friend, her friend would uh, be super like vulgar and be like, she would uh, quantify like things in like sucking dicks. And she, so she'd be like, 
I would suck like 50 dicks to get that hot dog or something like that. And um, so Irina says, I remember pointing out a guy on a night out and telling her I'd cut off one of my toes to fuck him. And she was like, ew, like her sucking 100 dicks isn't a more visceral image than me cutting off a toe. Just the one. <laughs> like that's just really fucking funny to me. So it's a very like, it has like a lot of those things. It's like kind of dark humor, kind of like, and it's, I really like that. And then, yeah, I, it really is. Okay, so there's, I'm trying to come to the conclusion without explicitly saying every single thing that was happening does that make sense like I, I, without spoiling anything like i had already said but basically this book really talks and delves into like woman sexuality uh there's one part where she's talking about how be like when she's taking her picture um how beautiful the men are like or this specific man is she would she was like describing like his stomach and his like thighs and like uh it went there and spoke about that and i really like enjoyed that and then it also spoke about how basically irena there was parts where they were very confusing and uh the audience the reader is like what the fuck is actually going on right now because <laughs> see it's hard for me to like not spoil it not say too much so the reader is like oh she's like hurting people right now so whether it be physically or emotionally she will be hurting people all the time but people forgive her and people come back to her and she's like why what am i like what do i have to do to get people to realize i'm a danger what do i have to do to get people to realize that i'm unstable i'm not somebody that you should continue to come back to what do i have to do and um basically my conclusion that i came from that that was as much as i can say without saying too much um is just like it really is like a woman is not seen as a threat in the same way that a man can would easily be perceived because oh well, women are perceived as weaker women are perceived as just emotional and not physical you know and things like that so i thought that was a very interesting commentary for eliza clark the author to make and um i think she executed it really well i at first gave this a three stars and then I, when i was talking to the person i buddy read this with uh her name's talia by the way like she has a name hello and talia if you're reading this what's up reading if you're <laughs> if you're watching this what's up originally gave this three stars and then i spoke with talia about this book and i was like it's done so masterfully it's done so creatively i think this that that alone is going to have to make me raise my score uh my score my rating to a four and that's just what i did because it's done very masterfully i recommend this book to anybody who it seems interested to get interested in it's it's for the people who like an unstable uh female character for the people who uh like a little bit of magical realism if you will uh, uh for the people who are like what the fuck is going on the entirety of the book this one's for you guys millennial fiction type you know on to the next the next book that i had read this month was crossroads by jonathan franzen i gave that a motherfucking five stars because i loved it i loved that book so much i spoke a bit about it in my last video well i guess in my last video that's up at the moment but i think i have one more video that's gonna go up before this video to be honest so uh i did a spontaneous reading vlog and i talked about crossroads and i just talked about how much i loved it it's basically it's super character driven and plot driven plot and character based it's gonna be a trilogy which is really exciting um because i really love this and on also jonathan franz and i didn't know he was such a like iconic author but after reading this i realized that he was I, I watched like one review my battery thing said 20 percent left i watched like one review and then and then i got a bunch a plethora of like people talking about jonathan franz and he's actually and he's like such a big author so that's cool to know and i he's definitely on my radar because if it's more of this character driven um literary fiction things even historical fiction because that's what this crossroads is then give me more of that i am so here for it um i would like to direct you to that video 
um, if you want to know my full in-depth thoughts about it just because I don't want this video to go on too long um, but the overarching thing that I will say uh, is this book is about um, a group a family and it's basically takes you through all of those people all the adventures or all of the things that they are doing um, and they, this family is the the dad is a pastor and so it really is just a lot about like christian like god what is god to different people it's just a timeline of these people's lives it's really really good it's done very well it's a six like 580 page book it's really long but fuck i love that shit oh my god and i absolutely i cared for these characters i loved like i was rooting for them all of them even if some of them were like, okay, that's a shitty thing to do. I was still like, I hope everything works out just fine for them. All of them. Because they fucking deserve it. And this, yeah, this author has such a good, like, such a way of making you fall in love with characters that I've never really seen before. I've never seen that before. At least I've never experienced that before. So I highly recommend it. Again, I gave it a five fucking stars instantly. I also have some, like, quotes here that i loved and i'm not gonna like say any of the quotes but like hello yeah that's it's kind of bright because i use some highlighter a little bit but like uh hello there's more here there's more here like i i love this book and i had a lot of things to say about it oh i forgot about these two books that i'm going to kind of group together so there's this book called the giant baby and a book called toast and they're both by Lori foos they're both short stories they were like 50 pages long like 52 i don't know but um so the story the giant baby is basically a couple who had they were they are into gardening and then one day the um man finds a, a like a pair of baby toes uh in their garden and so they decide to plant those toes and after they planted it basically a big baby started growing well at first it was you know small and then it started growing and kept just growing and it it's basically like a book an allegory even about parenthood and like this couple they were uh infertile basically like i think like like they couldn't you know have kids of their own so i thought that this was a really wholesome and cute story but also like a little sad it's definitely an interesting uh concept i gave this a four star the next book is toast uh by the same person and i gave this one a five star because I didn't even know this re going into it, reading it, but it is basically about this autistic boy and uh, it's called Toast because he needs his toast like in like toasted a specific way, like not too brown, like tan, but not too tan, basically like a very specific way of needing their toast, his toast done. And um, for the first time, his family is going. Okay, so he has an older, it's him and his older sister. And uh, for the first time, his his parents are going away and they're gonna have a babysitter and that's never happened before and basically it follows the girl saying like like just caring so much about her brother and being like like how is the babysitter gonna know this about him and this about him and this about him what if this happens and this happens and this happens like they're both like they're like two years apart like so he's like i don't know like four or five and she's like six seven um and so that's like the whole dilemma and it's that's just a really wholesome and cute, like lighthearted, cute easy fast read that i really fucking enjoyed and i always love reading about autistic people i didn't i again i did not know that it was like um you know an autistic little boy so that's that was uh really cool the next two books i'm again going to like kind of group together but i read pretty girls by Karen Slaughter and I read Sharp Objects by Jillian Flynn. I already have a vlog about these two books. It's not out yet, but it should be this month because I'm getting to it when it comes to editing. Like I'm almost done with editing that video. I just haven't, like that's what happens all the time. I'll be like almost done with editing a video and then I like stop and then it just sits on my iMovie for like two weeks. And that two weeks, fuck more like two months. Like I have a video that I started and finished in uh december just sitting there on my uh iMovie actually two two um and that's executive dysfunction ladies and gentlemen just like needing to do that shit but like not being able to woohoo anyways 
So I gave Pretty Girls 3 star, I gave Sharp Objects 4 star, and when that video comes out, you can see my full in-depth thoughts about it. But while I was reading Pretty Girls, I'm gonna insert a picture here. Like, I have a, like a bunch of tabs, I put this on my like Instagram. And I just put all, because this is a library book, and so I just put all of the uh, <laughs> tabs on my fucking journal for both this and Sharp Objects, which is only two things. Um, but <laughs> that's, that's, that's how I... Uh, kept my memory of because this is just me going through it and being like asking questions and then like having like my comments here my own little commentary so uh yeah the next book is open water by uh caleb nelson and i also spoke about this in my last vlog that i have posted here um and i don't i'm not just gonna i'm not gonna go into depth on that completely i gave it a four star it's a beautiful read i recommend it for all it was really interesting to read because to see like a black experience in like U the uk because that's where it was like from in london and uh i thought that that was a really interesting like thing to read about um i think that you know i highly recommend it. if you haven't already fucking read it it's you know everybody <laughs> i think everybody's read it honestly at this point i think i'm the last one but if you haven't get to it the next book is bluets by naggy 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 melson by maggie nelson i also talked about this in that vlog uh it's a beautifully written book i gave it a three stars i was about to say four because honestly that's really how it feels and i have a lot of quotes that i absolutely love from it and so i put it in here and of course in all blue i mean and then some more here but i got got that opportunity and i highly recommend it for you guys to read i'm doing so bad but like it's already been 20 minutes 21 minutes now and I, girl some of these books i honestly forgot that i even read okay if my body could speak by blythe baird now this is a poetry collection that i didn't care that much for i gave it a two star i want to tread this lightly because it was uh, a book that talked a lot about trauma and one and like the author's like body like eating disorders and the trauma that they experienced like sexual assault and stuff like that i just want to say that that's not like the reason i gave it a two star i just didn't like the writing style and i feel like this is kind of like a memoir-esque type thing or like a non-fiction like thing that i just can't say too much about because it's just somebody's personal experience and it just seems like overstepping something if i were to say like anything too critical about it like it's a poetry book for fuck's sake um i just didn't like the writing style i it was just not for me it's too contemporary too basic and like not what i think about when i think about poetry that i that's not fair to say because i feel like by poet like some of the po the shit that i've written like anybody could say that about like my stuff well i'll let them say that i, don't, I wouldn't really care but it's like when i'm i just have a specific thing when it comes to the poetry that i like to read and it just didn't hit that mark and that that's as simple as it gets okay the next book is rest and be thankful by emma glass i absolutely fucking love this book i gave it a 4.5 star um i have you know a few quotes not too many it's a short book it like was 160 pages but i love this book so much okay so basically this one is about a uh woman who works in a infant ward basically uh you know she helps she's a doctor and if kid if if babies are on the rocks they have they're sick or whatever you know she just tries to help them help cure them and uh sometimes that does not always go to plan of course the the best okay i'm sorry this book really got to me i'm feeling like weak like you know when you feel weak with like you're about to cry like i'm feeling that right now but um you know that kind of job is not always uh well <laughs> that kind of job is hard and it doesn't it's not always best case scenario and it talks i mean in it it, it it goes there it goes there it talks about the grief that she feels um when a child in her in their care dies and then the fact that they have to just do it all over again the next day and the next and the next and like um <laughs> I'm not gonna remember correct. And it's really um sad. And then there's also wow during this time she is losing her husband 
uh, they're kind of in a loveless situation. And you know, there is this one quote that I really like and I'm gonna read it all out and it, it, it was under the chapter called I function and I just think it was written so well. And it's a, I mean, it's a simple thing, but it says, I bought a book to read on my break. I am partly impressed and partly terrified at my ability to function, to pull myself together, to remain present and to present myself. I am half an hour early. And like, um, yeah, <laughs> like just having to dissociate between, um, like all the things that are happening, like having to, I should say, like step out of your body, uh, in order to function after even though so many things are just happening all around so death is happening all the time like death is happening all the time and people are leaving all the time people are falling out of love all the time things like that and it really is just so all-encompassing and it it, it it just spoke about that and it was really good and then there's another quote um well this is after kind of i should kind of uh give a preface this is after she like had just like grown up so it says, I am slick with sick. I am stained with grief. I'll wash it, but it won't wear away. Grief will be worn like a cloak, will drag along behind me, heavy. Some of these lines, so poetic, so beautiful, and uh, just does well. I highly recommend this book. It's gone down, I think, as one of my favorites. And I want to purchase it because I just read it on script. I want to purchase it one day, even though it's a short book, and I don't really like buying short books, but like, after, I don't know, it's just, I, I think I should have it. <laughs> um, kind of hard to get through sometimes, but I really fucking like it. Okay, next. <laughs> the next book is Universal Harvester. Uh, I gave this one star. Um, it just wasn't good. <laughs> Basically, it, it started really well. Oh, put the cover though. Iridescent, I think yes, okay. But it started really well, kind of creepy, kind of weird, what's going on, vibes, but then it never explained anything that was going on and the creepy, weird vibes never really stayed. So we had a book about nothing, literally nothing. I just, I was like trying so hard to be like, okay, so what does this have to do with the, the BHS tapes? Because basically that's how it starts. This guy who works at a, um, store a, a movie rental store and somebody's like hey there's some weird shit on this vhs and so he goes and watches it and he's like oh this is weird huh and uh weird shit did happen but then that stopped i guess it was trying to explain was it trying to explain i don't know it was boring i gave it a one star i like the cover that's all i gotta say i'm sorry I said more on my like Instagram again if you want to go follow that see a review for that shit you are more than welcome to do so the next book I read was Whisper Down the Lane by Clay McLeod Chapman and I gave this one a three star it was basically about like a little boy who started a rumor a lie a big fabricated lie because he thought that's what he was like five years old and he thought that's what the grown-ups wanted and so he got a teacher in big big trouble and then this seemingly haunts him for forever and i can't say too much holy shit okay i'm trying to I never said that um this that sounds like a cop-out but i could talk about this book because it's very very interesting but if i say too much it really is too much you know um but it also based off of like satanic panic in the 80s it says in the acknowledgments, like, the following books provided invaluable when researching this work of fiction. One of them is called We Will Leave the Children, A Moral Panic in the 1980s. And basically, like, this is a story, kind of like a story that had happened already before. Like, a kid lied about a whole entire thing and, like, the teacher got in big trouble for it. But it's just because the kid, the, like, the kid was like, okay, this is what the grown-ups want me to say, right? This is what they all want me to do. This is what they all want me to say. Um... And obviously he didn't know the weight of his decisions, the weight of his lies. He was never going to know he was five years fucking old. So it's about that. It was very interesting. But um, yeah, three stars. The next book, Fuckface by uh, Leah Hampton. This is a bunch of short stories. I like the title, but I don't know. It wasn't as compelling as I thought it was going to be. I don't know. But there was this one story actually, and it really got to me. It's called Saint. 
and it's about this person's brother dying and like like it starts right here like your brother is going to die in 12 years it is and then it like talks about a whole scene and then it like your brother's going to die in two months and it's a whole scene it is christmas it's another christmas and another 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 you give unwelcome unwanted gifts you know it just goes on and it's just about like her like somebody's brother dying and that always gets to me death gets to me hi i have ocd can you tell that i'm bored i'm so tired i just like want this to be done but then i still have to talk about hysteria and i'm like Am I going to be able to function right now? Like, say what I need to say about hysteria and do it justice? I don't know. Anyways. That's the book I read. It's hard to talk about short story collections, like, without, like, trying to individualize them all. Overall, it was a three-star. Don't I just have great reviews? Okay, and then hysteria, which... I gave this a four-star. Literally just finished reading it, like, today. Literally an hour ago. This book... I gotta say, is very similar to Boy Parts. Um, this is also about a woman who, like a 20 year old millennial, <laughs> like mid 20s millennial woman. She sees this man at the, at a bar and she is convinced that it's Freud. Um, I wish that this book delved more into psychology, but at the same time, it did, it did what it said it was gonna do. And um, the whole time, this is another one where you're like, what's actually happening? And until the end of the story, like past the end of the story, you don't truly know what was happening a lot like boy parts. There was also like a party scene. This is a lot like boy parts. Well, the main character is a mess in the sense of, well, she does, she's very impulsive. And she just says anything that she wants, like anything that she's feeling. And then right after she's like, oh fuck, I shouldn't say that. Or not even right after, more like she'll go to sleep or she'll be like walking about the day. And she's like, oh, I said this and that and that and this. Oh my God. And she has a like masturbation problem, if you can call it that. She has uh, like daddy issues, if you can call them that. You know, Freud, you know, Freud. Basically, it really does touch on those concepts that Freud was always bringing up. The very sexual content, like the latent reason why all the sexual urges are in you and all that stuff. And, you know, psychoanalytical uh, psychology, stuff like in therapy, stuff like that. It just it talks a lot about that, which was, again, was it was supposed to do that so it really did achieve what it was supposed to do um i really liked it i really love the cover it's really cool and like it really put, fits the vibe of the book of what the content you consume is so that's cool i also got this one scribbed maybe i'll get it on uh libby i mean what <laughs> what am i okay i was not paying attention to it. maybe i'll get it physically is what i'm trying to say but this is another short book, so I'm like, again, I don't really, I don't really buy short books that often. <laughs> I don't like doing that. Okay. I can't believe this is, this somehow managed to be 36 minutes, but I feel like I said nothing at all. I feel like I, I couldn't even start to touch on any of these fucking books. But I cannot, I can't afford to edit too much right now because mentally I can't handle it. So that's why I'm trying to make it as simple and like fast as possible. But at the same time, I feel like I said nothing. I don't know. What you should take out of this is go pick up Hysteria, go pick up Bluets, and go pick up Rest and Be Thankful. That's what you should have gotten out of this. Okay? Okay. And Crossroads, even. If that's what you're about. If that's what you're into. If any of this is what you're into. What am I saying? Okay. Um, That's a wrap on January.